Hey guys, it's Connor, and today we're talking about the Camrar Fluid Motion Slider. I picked this up two years ago now, and I've been really happy with this purchase. It's less than a couple hundred bucks, and it's an amazing slider, so I wanted to get the word out and give you a full review of the good and the bad, so you can get an idea of if it's a good purchase for you. List price for this is 279 US, but I have never seen it above 169 because it seems to always be on sale on their website. To save even more, if you sign up for their new newsletter, they have a 10% off coupon right now, so you can get it for even less. Now, because this is a slider and it's a gear review, of course, I'm going to be showing some footage of this in action, but I'm not going to be showing a ton. With something like a gimbal, there's a lot more variance and it's a spectrum of just how well it performs, just how smooth it is. But with sliders, it either works or it doesn't. Camrar makes several sliders, but this is the fluid motion slider, and it gets its name from the fact that it uses a flywheel counterweight belt system to smooth out the motion. This adds some resistance, so as I start to push the carriage, it takes a little bit to get up to speed. And as I let go, you can see that it'll carry on by itself, slowly decelerating. This is just a great way to make sure that you don't have any sudden starts or stops in your movement, which can be really jarring, and that's not what we're looking for with sliders movement. In practice, it's essentially taking a lot of the responsibility off of your shoulders. The slider is doing so much of the work for you that you don't need to be put in this position where you go to start the movement, but it's too quick at first. You make this little jump and then you sort of get in the groove of the right speed. You don't have that problem because the counterweight is making sure all movement is smooth and steady. Now let's say for some reason you do want to do a very sudden motion. Maybe you're filming an action sequence and you want to quickly go from a character's hand to them picking up an object and you just want to stop right on that object. That's not a problem because you can still remove that counterweight and now I have all the freedom to do lots of quick short moves without having that resistance getting in the way of that. As you've seen already I can operate this manually by just moving the carriage by hand or the weight itself has a crank system on it which which again, takes a lot of the responsibility off your shoulders. For medium and fast shots, there really isn't a big difference in the result between moving the carriage yourself and using the crank to do it. But slow movements is where this really comes in handy. If I wanna be extremely slow while moving the carriage, it's really tough because sometimes I'm putting just enough amount of resistance to make it move. Sometimes I'm doing too much and it goes a little bit too fast. Making these precise movements is a lot harder. Whereas with the crank, because it's this larger rotational movement, I can be really slow and go at the same pace a lot easier. Plus I don't have the same resistance I'm fighting against because I'm actually operating it on the counterweight wheel. I think the best thing I can say about the actual performance of the slider because of all these great features is that it's never gotten in my way. I shouldn't have to fight gear to get a good result, and a lot of budget gear does make you fight it in order to get the result that you want. But anytime I've gotten a really poor shot, it's been my fault. I've been the one to screw it up and not the gear, which is the best thing you can ask about any piece of equipment. Moving on to the construction and build quality, we've got carbon fiber rails supporting this slider, and that's a very common choice nowadays because it's very strong, but also really light. This means it's so much easier to transport around, and on top of that, if you're putting it on top of a tripod that maybe isn't a high quality tripod, you might not have to worry so much because it's a lot lighter than if you had an all metal build. Now that's great in theory that we can say that it's very light and very strong, but we only really get a good idea when we compare it to more expensive sliders. If you look at some brand names like Rhino Slider, they have a 15 pound weight capacity for a 24 inch slider. Now as the length gets longer, the weight capacity tends to go down a little bit. So this is roughly comparable to the same weight capacity as a Rhino Slider, which is a great brand brand name company at about 30% of the price. The weight capacity to price ratio is fantastic. It, it clearly holds up in that regard, but it's not that simple. On its own, the slider can only perform lateral movement, so I can't do any panning or tilting out of the box. But if you look at how sliders are used a lot in film, you're generally having some lateral movement incorporated with panning and tilting on a fluid head as well. The problem is, as soon as we add a fluid head, we're taking anywhere between two to maybe six pounds off that weight capacity right away. I have a Sony a6500 that I'm shooting on right now, and it's a very light camera. But as soon as I've got just the camera cage, the lens, the lens adapter, and an external monitor, I'm already up right around six pounds already. So if I wanna mount that camera with everything on it, on here with a fluid head, 
it better be a really light fluid head or I'm gonna be over that weight capacity. Even if you bought the slider just to push in and out and you're not looking for pan or tilt, you're still gonna to wanna to get a fluid head anyway to raise the height because if you're pointing down one end of this, as soon as you pull it all the way back, you're gonna see the counterweight in the frame. This is a big downside for me. I don't wanna to have to be doing a lot of math ahead of time to figure out just what kind of camera rig I can put together for my slider. In a case like this, it might just be better to take some parts off the rig, maybe take the external monitor and use a friction arm mounted on the end of the slider because it does have the threads for that. But even then I wouldn't do that unless I was mounting the slider on two separate tripods. If I just mount it on one central tripod, there's a good chance that this is gonna to start to lean one direction as I move the slider. Another downside to this is that it's not modular, so you can't add longer rails or add a motor system or anything like that. The most frustrating part is that it's not because of the design, because if you look at either end of the slider, you can unscrew the rails. But Camera doesn't sell any longer rails, and even if you could find maybe a third party to get you longer rails, the problem is they don't sell a belt system for this that's any longer either. You might be able to find some workarounds by going through third parties, but it's going to take a lot of work and probably more money than it's worth when you could spend the same amount of money on a slider that is modular. This is a great slider in its own right, but if you're looking for a piece of gear that's going to grow with you, this isn't going to be it. All of the legs are independently adjustable, meaning if you want to put this on a slightly uneven surface, in my experience, you can still get it pretty level. However, in all honesty, I don't really see the benefit to this because unless you're doing a lot of outdoor adventure run and gun type shoots, likely most of us are going to be placing this on a tripod or at the very least some sort of table or surface we already have. Regardless, I do appreciate that they're still including something like this at this price point. Speaking of which, if you are using a tripod for support or two of them, you do have lots of options here. We've got one quarter inch and three eighth threads on either end of the slider as well as in the center. So you won't have any problems even if you're using two different tripods with two different thread sizes. The carriage itself does have a locking thumb screw at the back, which makes it really easy to go from slider movement to just locking it off and doing a tripod shot if you want to. The carriage also has a built-in spirit level, which makes it a lot easier to get an even horizon and make sure you're not moving or shooting on any sort of angle. You're boxed in a little bit because if I want the spirit level on this side, well now I constantly have to reach around and I could be bumping a rig, unplugging things accidentally, it's just a little bit in the way to have to reach around to unlock or lock the carriage. But on the flip side, if I have that locking knob where I want it at the back, well now my camera is going to be covering the spirit level, so it's completely useless. It's not make or break by any means, but just why? I've got one last downside here, and that's that although mine is all black, as you can see, it didn't come that way. It comes with all the little knobs painted bright red, and the counterweight itself is this giant shiny chrome piece. I took all these little parts off and spray painted them black because I'm often in situations where I'm dealing with a lot of reflective things. I shoot a lot of music videos, so if somebody has a guitar that has a nice gloss finish on it, I'm probably going to be able to see this bright counterweight in the reflection, and that's not what we want. It's going to take you a $5 can of spray paint and an afternoon to fix that issue but it's still more work that you have to do. I don't understand why companies think we want these fun colors because it's just not practical. They also provide a soft carrying case, which as you can see has been through the ringer a little bit, which is great and makes life a lot easier. If it wasn't for this one ridiculous design decision where the weight is stored in a pocket down at one end. As a result, when you're carrying the slider, it's constantly going like this. The solution to this is take the weight off, put it in that pouch, and then take the carriage and lock it all the way down at the opposite end of that pouch while it's in the case. So you have a little bit of a counterweight to help it out. Despite the poor design choices here and there, I really do think this is a fantastic slider. So let me break down why it's great and who I would recommend this to. The build quality is fantastic. I don't see a single piece on here that's plastic. Everything is metal and carbon fiber. And as far as I can tell, after two years, I don't see any signs of wear and tear on this anywhere. The belt and counterweight system are 
perfect. I have no issues with it. The performance is great. It doesn't fight you. It's the perfect amount of resistance. I find it does the perfect amount of decelerating when I let go of it. I'm really happy with how that's designed. And lastly, it has everything you really need in a slider. It doesn't have more luxurious features like modularity and a motor system, but those are things that frankly aren't available at this price point anyway. That being said, I recommend this slider for two types of people. The first is someone who isn't really sure about sliders, which is who I was when I bought this. If you don't know if you want one in the long term, if you don't know if it suits your style or if you like the kind of movement, this would be a great one to pick up because it's really cheap, but it's not poor quality whatsoever. You know that if you get this slider and it doesn't work for you and you don't like it, you know it's because you don't like slider movement in general and it just doesn't suit your style. It's not because you had a really crappy slider that gave you a bad experience. The second kind of person I'm gonna recommend this to is anyone who knows for sure that they want a slider, but you don't need any of the luxuries of motorized sliders and you don't really care too much about having to maybe downsize your rig just a little bit in order to meet that weight limit. Coming in at 169 or even less if you sign up for their newsletter, I can't see how you could possibly go wrong with something like this. If you have any questions about this, please let me know. I'll be happy to help you out. But until then, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.